20% of the population is highly sensitive. And so that means that 50 million Americans, just think of it, 50 million Americans have a finely tuned nervous system. But yet, up until 10, 12 years ago, no one ever knew that. And so 20% of the population thought, there must be something wrong with me because I, I have a real hard time listening to noise. And for example, you could be sitting in a room with a non-HSP and a siren will go by, the sensitive person will just startle, and the non they'll say, oh wow, that siren was so loud to the non-sensitive person, and the non-HSP, non-highly sensitive person might say, I didn't hear anything. So HSPs have such a, such a more challenging time and no one even recognized it. It's much, much more difficult for sensitive boys than sensitive girls. Because in a way, society expects girls to cry and express their emotions and boys are supposed to be tough. As a matter of fact, it's interesting, one study I like to refer to shows that newborn infant boys are actually more emotional than infant girls. But the time a boy gets to be about four or five years old, he's learned to repress every emotion except anger. Because that's the only emotion that's okay for males to express. And so for a sensitive boy who feels things deeper than other boys, they usually feel like they don't fit in. And um, in preparation for my book, I did a survey of 30 highly sensitive men in five different countries. And most of the men, especially in North America, had a, such a hard time growing up in, in the culture of, some people call it the um, cruel boy culture, where boys are supposed to act tough. And if boys show any sensitivity, any compassion, any fear, if they cry, the other boys usually just really taunt them and tease them. So most of the sensitive boys had a very difficult time, especially in North America. And that reminds me of a, uh, a, a wonderful study Elaine Aaron quotes in her book, The Highly Sensitive Person, that the children from China who were the most sensitive were the most popular, but the children from North America, I believe it was Canada, were the least popular, the ones who were the most sensitive. One man I interviewed from Thailand said, even though he was sensitive, the children liked him and they saw that he had special attributes and he was elected president of his class usually. So it really depends on the culture you're growing up in. In my study, and I do want to say that it was only 30 men, so it's not statistically significant, but we do see some interesting trends. And the men growing up in North America had to deny their real selves when they were boys. There was one man I remember in particular who played the flute in the band. And he said it was bad enough being in the band because that wasn't considered masculine. But if you, there's a whole hierarchy, he said. But if you played the drums or trumpet, you're considered more masculine than if you played the flute. So here this, this, this man, when he was a boy, liked playing the flute. He just had an interest in it. He was good at it. But he ended up quitting the band, quitting playing the flute, and going out for the football team so that he'd be accepted. And he wasn't the only man. There were so many men who said, ah, oh, if I showed my real feelings, if I didn't act rough uh, and play rough sports, they'd be, I'd be called sissy or really bad names, humiliated, girl, weakling. So they had to deny their real selves growing up. And it's, very, it's a very sad commentary on our society. I actually had a highly sensitive man tell me that he likes to go hunting. And he like, as a boy, he used to shoot off his rifle all the time. And at one level, it seems uh, a bit of a paradox because most sensitive people are very sensitive to the needs of animals and they don't like violence. As a matter of fact, 85% of the men I interviewed said they had an anathema toward violence, maybe in the media. But this goes to show you that every sensitive person is different. So some, some sensitive men actually were, are hunters and they like to go off in the wilderness and hunt. Some sensitive men I interviewed loved athletics and they played on their school football team, basketball team, soccer team. This is a theory I have and I could be wrong, but when you look at the United States, who came to the United States way back when? I'm not talking about the slaves who were forced here, but the, 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 the Caucasian population. These were the men who wanted adventure. 
uh, they came to the United States and they had to fight the Native Americans. They had to fight the forests. And so I think you got more non-highly sensitive people, especially men, coming to the United States. And that's why the whole culture is based on this individualistic attitude for men and women, but especially for men, you have to be self-reliant. You can never admit you make a mistake. While on the other hand, I think a lot of the people who stayed in Europe were busy painting masterpieces like Michelangelo or writing beautiful um, uh, musical cantatas like uh, Mozart. Uh, not everyone, of course, and some countries in Europe can be equivalent to the um, macho culture of the United States in terms of men supposed to act tough. But I think a lot of the countries, especially in Scandinavia and Holland, you'll see th there's not such an emphasis on men have to be tough and strong, can never make mistakes. And of course, men who have to repress their emotions and can't ever express themselves have problems in their relationships, in their job, and with their health, because they can't ever admit they're, they're weak and have, have anything wrong with them. The, I was actually at the local VA hospital recently, and there was a great sign that says, it takes the strength of a warrior to admit that you have emotional crisis, because men are taught never to admit that there's anything wrong. It's really important that if someone is not highly sensitive, we as HSPs don't think, oh, well, those people aren't sensitive. And I think of my dad, who um, passed away a few years ago, who was totally non-HSP. We'd hear a siren or a car backfire, and he goes, what? I didn't hear anything. And pressure never bothered him. He was the most non-HSP, but yet he was one of the most, the kindest, most altruistic persons I've ever met. He was always caring about the poor and the downtrodden and always trying to help everyone. And on the same token, you can get a highly sensitive person who's not compassionate and altered other people because they're so self-absorbed about, worried about their own um, stimulation. Oh, this is affecting me. Uh, you have to do this, you have to do that. So you can be a very non-compassionate, highly sensitive person and you can be a compassionate, non highly sensitive person. So that's important. In my research uh, that I did for my most recent book, every sensitive man had lots of traits they put down, how much they enjoyed being a sensitive person. First of all, sensitive people are very responsible. They make great workers, whatever job, because they're very responsible and conscientious. Sensitive people have deep spiritual experiences they're very intuitive, they're very in touch with the divine energy. You have a sensitive person go out for a walk in nature, they can see beauty deeper than a non-HSP. They appreciate music, art on such a deep level. They feel love deeper. They can love people, they can love the world more than a non-HSP. So there's some really wonderful traits. Uh, many of the men I interviewed said the fact that they're sensitive and more tuned in makes them much better. One man, even as a financial planner, said he's a better financial planner because he can intuit and he can be sensitive to his client's needs and what's, what needs to get done. Actually, w one man said he feels sensitive men are, better, are a better catch for being a husband and an employee and a friend because they're so kind and so sensitive to other people's needs. It's particularly hard though for gay men who have a finely tuned nervous system because then they feel left out from the majority heterosexual population and then they're left out from the vast majority non-HSP population. And, um, but the, the notion that all gay men must have a finely tuned nervous system is, is, is pure rubbish. It's very hard because men who are sensitive have to deny the real selves because otherwise people, they, the men I interviewed said, oh, growing up, the ones who were heterosexual had to act tougher so they didn't think people would, would, would think they were gay. Unfortunately, most non-HSPs 
condemn people who are sensitive, saying, what's wrong with you? What are you being so sensitive? You're just too sensitive. Come on, we're all going out to, we're all going to party tonight. What's, why don't you want to go out? What's wrong with you? It's so important, though, for sensitive people to learn to assert themselves and speak their truth. And it's okay if you don't want to go to a big party at night um, or go out to a movie on a Saturday night, if you'd rather be more inward and do an art project or read. But you have to be able to feel okay about yourself in speaking up. I also say, though, that it's important to compromise. So if you have a partner who's non-HSP and you're HSP, you work things out. Okay, so you want to go out to dinner? Let's not go on a Saturday night. Let's go on a weekday night earlier. A lot of restaurants have an early bird special. You can go at 5.30 or 6 and avoid the crowd. So you always have to work out a situation or if, if you're, um, let's say, an HSP woman and your non-HSP husband wants to go rock climbing, so you can go to a park and the non-HSP husband can rock climb and you can sit and read a book or take a walk in nature. So you're always wanting to compromise and don't blame people who are, um, there's a tendency to, I think sometimes to blame non-highly sensitive people because we've been blamed so much, we'll, we'll tend to blame them. And don't forget, 80% of the population isn't affected like we are. But to experience all the positive aspects of being sensitive, you have to plan ahead. And you can't go along with the crowd and and you can't worry about hurting someone else's feelings sometimes. Well, gee, if I don't go to this party, uh, I might offend someone. If I don't want to go, my relative to visit me, I might offend them. You have to be speaking your truth all the time. And then you have whatever tools you need in your toolkit, which I talk about in my book, The Highly Sensitive Person Survival Guide. May it be using aromatherapy to calm you down or... Um, staying off the computer and turning off electronic equipment at night. You have to do whatever you need to do to quiet your nervous system down. So if you plan ahead, speak your truth to people. As a highly sensitive person, you'll have just a marvelous life.